I am a professional artist as well as a gallerist. I run the San, the San Francisco Artist Network and I do professional development programs for artists and I've done quite a few programs for uh, Marin Open Studios. So thank you, Kay, for inviting me to come back and do this uh, program on Zoom today. Um, I am the managing partner of Arc Gallery in San Francisco. Uh, we have a 2,000, excuse me, an 8,000 square foot building uh, with 10 artist studios, a 1,000 square foot main gallery and a project gallery downstairs as well as several art organization offices and a coffee shop in our building. And we do two national juried exhibitions every year and we also do a Bay Area juried exhibition each year. So not only am I an artist who have experienced submitting to juried exhibitions, but I'm a gallerist who has organized juried exhibitions. So I um, know about juried exhibitions on both sides of the, uh, the business. So. With the pandemic going on, um, so many galleries are um, closed or just open for social distance viewing or by appointment only. There's a lot of challenges and there's not as many opportunities for us to exhibit our artwork as artists. So one opportunity that's still going forward is juried shows. So at Art Gallery in April, we had to cancel our juried show at that time but since then in May and going forward, we're still doing our physical juried exhibitions and our regular exhibitions. So I think to um, get your work shown now and to um, build your exhibit history, you could utilize juried exhibitions. So I'm gonna go ahead and screen share and we're gonna go through a presentation that I put together about um, entering jury shows. And if you have any questions, periodically I will stop and, and end the screen share. And then we, I can ask if anybody has questions and you can raise your hand. If you raise your hand, then I can unmute you and I can answer your questions, okay? So um, this is just who I am. Again, I'm the managing partner of Art Gallery and in San Francisco. So what is the difference between a curated exhibition and a juried exhibition? There are two different things. So a curated exhibition is usually one or more individual who actually selects the artist based on their entire body of work and the artist's reputation. They may find them on our, by going to their website or they may often set up a time where they go visit their studio. So they're not just selecting the artwork, they're selecting the entire body, um, they're, they're based, selecting the participation by the artist's entire body of work and who they are. So they're basically judging the artist. However, in a juried exhibition, one or more individuals act as a judge for the submitted work. And it's usually a blind jury process where only the submitted art images are seen and no one knows who the artist is. They don't know their name or their history. So the selection is made basically on the merits of the image and not on the merits of the artist. So if the artist um, is famous or not famous, they have no idea. Somebody could have made one piece, their very first piece. Teresa, um, can you turn off your um, audio, please? Um. I don't understand. What's that? Can you turn off your audio, please? Turn off. Okay. Here, let's see. Here, I'll turn on mute. I'll see if I can do that. Nope. Oh, turn off. Huh? Let me try. Okay. Sorry. Um, we always have <laughs> technical issues when we do Zoom with a large group of people. Okay. So, um, an artist could have made their very first work ever and submit to a jury show and nobody knows that this person has never made artwork before because it's based on their the image and not based on their reputation. So for entering juried exhibitions, um, you should take into consideration the venue. Okay, Teresa, you're still you're making lots of noise in the background. I feel like I'm making a Geico commercial. 
Oh, really? I think yes. so. You, in the lower left quarter okay. of your screen, there should be an audio and you should click that okay. off. Is the okay. not off? Can't speak. I think it's in the upper right corner. I actually have her picture. Left side, right? I tried to hit No, it. look at your picture in the upper right hand corner. If you <laughs> hold it, there'll be an unmute button right there, unmute. I don't see anything it's here. It's so embarrassing. You have to move your mouse over your picture, and in the right corner of your picture, there's a little option to mute yourself. Okay. Check. Now it's done? We can still hear you. Say, tell me again where to hit. Okay, I just was able to mute you. Okay, we're gonna start back up again. <laughs> okay, so Linda, maybe in the future you should put the setting that everyone is muted when they start, when they join the meeting and then we will avoid this problem. Okay, so a juried exhibition um, is a way for a gallery or an organization to gain more exposure to new artists, but it's also a way to raise operational funds from the entry fees. So uh, when you're submitting to a juried show, um, one thing I like to keep in mind is I'm, I'm submitting my artwork and I'm giving them an entry fee but the fee is not just a fee, it's a donation to the organization or the business to keep them going and help them support the activities that they're doing that helps other artists, okay? So benefits to participating in a juried exhibition may be getting your work viewed by a prominent juror or adding a prestigious show or location to your resume and exhibit history showing your work in a well-known venue or having your work seen by a larger audience. You might even sell your artwork. So I'm going to share with you some tips for submitting to jury shows. So these aren't going to guarantee your at entry, but it's going to help uh, improve your odds. So you want, number one, you want to make sure that you're submitting on the deadline or before the deadline. Kathleen, could you please mute yourself and turn off your audio? I don't know how to do that on my... Here we I can't go. hear him. Uh, Why can't I hear him? Mute. I don't see beep, you. Beep, beep, beep. Okay, I'm sorry, I don't see you to be able to mute you. Okay, so the joys of using Zoom. <laughs> so you wanna make sure that you submit your work before the deadline. If you wait until the actual deadline, you may have made some mistakes and then it may be too late to correct the mistakes and you won't be able to be considered for the show. It may be too late for the um, administrator to make those corrections. So you want to be sure um, that you make uh, submit on time. And what I like to do is submit two or three weeks ahead of time. So if there's any problems at all, there's plenty of times to correct those problems before the deadline. At ARC, we have uh, usually have a deadline on a Monday night and 95% of our entries are submitted on Monday night. So we may have 300 people submitting in about six hours time. And if there's problems or with them, uh, with their submissions at midnight, they are not accepted. And so does that mean that we stay up till three o'clock in the morning responding to your emails and taking care of your problems? No, it does not. So if you wait till the last minute, 
you may have a problem with your submission and then you're, you miss the deadline. So be sure to um, submit early. Be sure to read the prospectus and follow directions. So the prospectus will be filled with a lot of information about the show, the theme and the venue and who the juror is, the dates of the show, what the fees are, how to submit um, and where to submit and whether there's insurance liability and what the deadlines are. So read all those details um, and follow the instructions. And before you fill out the application, you want to decide, do you qualify for the show? So when you read the prospectus, you want to make sure that you're eligible. So some shows may be for artists residing in California only, and you happen to live in Montana, so you wouldn't qualify for that. Um, sometimes art organizations that are out of state may have a uh, member's show, and they allow you to join and become a member and then submit to their member's organization. So for example, the Petaluma Art Center. I don't live in Petaluma, but I can join the Petaluma Art Center and then I'm eligible to submit to their members' exhibitions. So that's something that you need to pay attention to as well. And then the theme is very important. So the juror is making decisions based on the theme. So you want to make sure that your work matches the theme. Some artists choose to make work specifically for the theme, or you could go through your artwork and then pick shows that match themes of the work that you've already made. You want to decide if the price is right. So there's going to be expenses with the show. So that may be the entry fee, and there may be a hanging fee or a membership fee or a catalog fee, um, things like that. So you want to decide if you're, it's worth um, submitting because you may um, have to come out with some additional costs. If you're going to be shipping, so if you're going to ship your artwork to New York, for example, you have to pay for the packaging, you have to pay for the postage and the insurance, then you also have to pay for the return postage. So if it's a large piece or very heavy, it could be very expensive. So you want to decide in advance um, pieces that might be more affordable to ship or easier to ship would be the ones that you want to submit. Okay, and you want to use the image title and the artist statement to help sell your piece to the juror. So make sure you have a good quality image so that it's sharp and clear. This is really important. And you want to make sure that you label each image file as the prospectus, prospectus uh, request. So you want to make sure that if they ask for your last name first and your second name and your first name second that you do it that way. So you want to make sure that you title all the files in the manner that they ask so uh, you don't get disqualified for not following instructions. And the, the title can be an important part of the consideration. If they see, they see your piece and they see the title, the title can give some additional information on how the piece relates to the theme. So including the title in the, in the uh, submission can help you sell to the juror. Um, sometimes an artist statement is requested and I think that's an added bonus. So be sure to write a statement that describes your work and relates directly to the theme. You could take an existing um, artist statement that you already have and adjust it to this piece in particular or the pieces in particular that you're going to submit to the jury show. And I used to think that this wasn't that important until James Bocci with Art House Gallery juried one of the shows at ARC. And I saw his selection and I, when I saw J James, I said, you know, this piece here, I'm really surprised that you picked this um, this isn't usually your style. And he said, yeah, I almost passed on it, but then I read the artist statement and it sold me on including it. So I was surprised. The artist statement changed his mind and he included the piece because of the artist statement. So that could happen many times. So you want to make sure that you include a good artist statement to help sell the piece. Be sure to follow the exhibition requirements. So they may require, have specific requirements that, about the medium or the size. So you want to make sure that you're not submitting a piece that is too large or too small. Almost every juried show that we have at ARC 
There's pieces that are too wide. The maximum width is 48 inches. And we've had people submit pieces that are 60 inches wide, 72 inches wide, and they're automatically disqualified. So be sure to read the prospectus and make sure that you're submitting the pieces that are the right size and that they're the right medium. Okay, so I'm gonna stop share and see if anybody has any question at this point, you can raise your hand and I'll unmute you and answer your question. Okay, uh, Nini. Hi, okay. uh, my question is when you can submit, say three images, I'm always torn between say, doing three from a series so if the juror likes it, maybe multiple pieces will get in or throw the kitchen sink at them and submit three different types of images in the hopes that one will appeal. Yes, so that's your decision, but I, my, I do have a preference. I like to submit three different styles, three different looks. So if I submit three different things that all look pretty similar that are within the same series, then they, they, they may pick one of the three. Um, then the other two are superfluous. So I think um, adding some other images that are different um, gives you a better chance. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Okay. Absolutely. Good. Okay, anybody else have a question? Uh, raise your hand. Okay, so we'll go back to sharing the screen. Okay, so if there's anything in the prospectus that's not clear to you, then go ahead and contact the show administrator. So you read the document, make sure that you've understood everything, and then you can send them an email and just say, hey, you know, I read your email or your announcement, and I'm not sure if this is accepted. We get those all the time at ARC and I'm happy to answer their questions. They, have, they ask questions about the framing. They'll even send me pictures. These are the frames that I frame my work in. Is this acceptable? Or I hang the pieces from the ceiling using wire uh, and this type of uh, support. Is that acceptable? So I'm more than happy uh, to read those uh, emails and answer them back and give them guidance. So if you have any type of questions whatsoever, uh, feel free to email the administrator and, and, and um, ask any questions that you might have. So if your piece is an artist book, you might ask, can I submit multiple images of different pages? And so they can let you know if you can do that and how to do that as well. Okay, so if you um, submit your work and you got no confirmation that the work was submitted, then it might be a good idea to contact them and just say, you know, I submitted a piece to you for the such and such show last week. I just want to make sure that you received it. So usually everybody gets an email that confirms, thank you for submitting your work for this exhibition. So if you don't read a, receive a confirmation, you might send an email asking to make sure that that was received. Okay, so unfortunately, if there's 600 pieces submitted for a show, there may be only 30 spaces or room for only 30 pieces that can be accepted into the show. So that's just part of the nature of submitting to shows that sometimes we get rejected. It happens to all of us and don't take it personally. You know, I'm a human being and every time I get rejected, it's like, oh no, it feels bad. I can't help it, um, but that's part of it. So I submit to juried shows periodically through the year and I expect to get out of, get into maybe two out of 10. So that with that type of expectation, I'm not very disappointed when I don't get into several shows. Um, but if you follow the, the suggestions that I made and pick the right pieces, and submit on time and include your artist statement, then you're lowering the, the possibility of being rejected. Also keep in mind that the juror is making a blind selection. So they're, they don't see the names of the artists. So they're making the decision basically 
only on the image and the artist statement. So there may be many reasons why your piece was not selected and it may not have anything to do with the quality of the work. The juror may actually have a particular vision about the theme and your piece just doesn't match that vision. Or the juror may have liked your piece, but it didn't go with the other pieces that they selected. Or your piece was not presented well. It was either poor construction or the image was blurry or something wrong with the, the way that was presentation, present, president, president, presented. I'm <laughs> getting tongue tied with that. Um, and your artist statement um, may not have clarified how your piece fits in with the theme or you were not actually qualified to submit because of your residence or your medium. So those are reasons that you may be rejected. Um, it's some find, sometimes helpful to write the exhibition organizers and ask what you could have done better. So it's not out of line. If you didn't get into an exhibition and you thought your work was perfect for the exhibition, you could email them and just say, you know, I submitted to this and is there any way that you could um, help me understand why the piece wasn't accepted. And the juror sometimes um, is happy to um, answer that. I have talked to several jurors who have answered that question to artists. So if you get in, that's exciting. Now, what do you do? Well, it's great to get that acceptance letter. Um, and it's a good validation that all your hard work and your piece was uh, resonated with the juror. So now, um, you need to make some temp, uh, some take some steps to make sure that your exhibition is a success. So if they're doing a catalog, they may need um, high quality images for the catalog. So you wanna make sure that you send a high quality image to them. Um, you wanna make sure your work is gallery ready. And that means that it's matted or framed, uh, that it has wiring. Um, you want to figure out how it will be displayed if it's 3D. Do not use sawtooth hangers. Every gallery I know hates sawtooth hangers. So at ARC, in our prospectus, we say all artwork must be framed and wired, ready to hang. So we require wire. If the work is brought in and there's not wire on the back, we ask the artist, to go and wire it and bring, they can bring it back before the deadline, but they have to rewire it it's themselves. So the reason why a sawtooth hanger doesn't work is usually that's just one little nail in the center of the piece. And we live in earthquake country or we live in a, or we're in a city where there's trucks that go by and the whole building will rattle and all the artwork will slip and move. So by having wire, we can put two nails, two hangers on the wall and the wire goes across the two hangers and then it keeps it steady and it keeps it from slipping and moving during an earthquake or as a truck goes by. So you wanna make sure that you wire all the pieces. Be sure to follow delivery instructions and deadlines for mailing and drop off. And avoid using styrofoam peanuts. Some galleries prohibit that completely. They make a mess in the gallery and cause a lot of extra time in dealing with cleaning up the, all the styrofoam peanuts. And you make sure, want to make sure that you use a sturdy box so your work can be shipped back. At ARC, we recommend that the artists double pack their work. So they pack the work in one box and then they pack it into a second box with additional padding and be sure to include a return postage, uh, which may be a prepaid FedEx label or a prepaid UPS label. So we require that for any artwork that's being shipped to our gallery, we required a prepaid label. If it does not include a prepaid label, we do not hang the work. And you wanna make sure you obtain insurance from your carrier if your piece is fragile. Unfortunately, pieces get damaged in shipment. They could get damaged in shipment to the gallery or they could get damaged in shipment back from the gallery. So you wanna make sure that you have insurance on your shipment. And if you're delivering your work, um, you wanna make sure that the uh, organizers are gonna hang the work for you or if you're required to hang the work. And if you're required to hang your own work, you need to bring your own hanging tools and display materials. 
Okay, so once you've uh, shipped or delivered the work, now the opening reception is coming up or there may be an online Zoom reception. So you wanna invite your family, friends, and collectors. And so um, most galleries rely on the artists that are participating in the exhibition to get the word out for the opening. So you're a vital part of promoting the event. At ARC, if we have 30 artists in an exhibition and we're gonna have an opening reception, so we're counting on each artist to maybe have five people come from their friends, family, and collectors. So that's um, 90 people that, um, or excuse me, five times 30 is 150 people that the artist would bring in besides our usual uh, followers for our gallery. So that's a really important part of participating in a juried exhibition is that you invite your, your people to come or participate in the online um, gallery. So promote it through your blog, through Facebook and in Instagram and publicize the event. You can even add it to your website, okay? So if you're, there's a local exhibition, you wanna uh, attend that physically or participate with it online through Zoom. And the gallerists um, and the other people will note that you've participated. And so that's something that bodes well for you and they may actually invite you to participate in future exhibitions. Okay, and then picking up of your artwork is just as important as delivering your work. So if you don't supply packaging materials and return postage, or you don't come and pick up your work by the deadline, your work may be thrown out or they may actually ch charge you uh, for being late. So you don't want to have, deal, have to deal with that problem. So be sure to address the pickup and delivery. If you know you're not gonna be able to pick up the work on their uh, specified time, most places will allow you to have somebody else pick it up for you. So you can make the arrangements for them to pick somebody else to pick it up. And you wanna document your participation. So if there's a catalog, you wanna order one and keep that in your studio. You wanna update your resume and include the exhibition on your resume as well. Okay, so does anybody have any questions? Um, raise your hand and I'll be happy to answer that. We covered a lot of different information. No questions, I covered everything. <laughs> I did a good job. Okay, so I'm going to go back to up. Oh, I see somebody uh, raised their hand. Yes, Kathleen. Kathleen, you need to unmute yourself. All right, there we go. Um, okay. Yes. So when you were talking about packaging your artwork, mm -hmm. um, you can go and have it done, or you can do it yourself. You can do but either of those. Do, yes. But do they ensure if you've done it yourself when you post it? Um, you, know, it, it, you know, I have dealt with UPS uh -huh. in many different places, different cities and different locations within a city, and each UPS has a different policy, and it's very frustrating. I've been to some UPS offices, and they require that they pack it, but I've yeah. been to other UPS, they, they accept me packing it. So you may even call the UPS or FedEx office that you know you're going to deliver your work to and ask mm -hmm. in advance, do you accept me packaging that I do myself or do you require, are you requiring me to have you pack it? So okay. it's best to plan that in advance. But okay. I almost always pack my own art. And do you use cardboard or do you use wood? I use cardboard boxes, yes. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. okay, great, thank you. Sure. Okay, any, any other questions? Any answers? Oh, Marsha has a question. Okay, Marsha, do you wanna unmute yourself? Try. What, okay. uh, well, two, two things, what kind of work do you do? <laughs> what kind of work do I box, do? To pack in uh, a cardboard box. So I do mixed media collage, so works on paper that are framed. Um, and I how also, big? And I, um, I have shipped up to pieces up from up to 24 by 36, but I okay. tend to, for jury shows that I ship, I tend to stick to 12 by 12. I tend to stick to just smaller pieces. 
that are okay. lighter and cost less to ship. Right. And also, what is the name of your um, of the gallery? Or I mean, where is it? It's A R T or Arc. It's Arc A R C. Arc okay. Gallery is in San Francisco, south of Market on Folsom Street. And, and so, what's the address? Twelve forty six Folsom Street. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, Melissa. Uh, <clears throat> I had a question about peanuts. Um, I do some ceramic work, so sometimes when I ship, it uh, works out best to do peanuts, but I noticed they're all, the ones I'm getting are compostable peanuts now. Does that make? That makes no difference because peanuts make a huge mess and I have to go get my broom and the dust band pin and sweep them all up and as I go after them, they go five feet away from me and I have to chase them through the gallery and it's a really frustrating experience. So if you're gonna use peanuts, one thing to do is you put them in a plastic bag and to themselves that it's loose within the bag and then wrap it around the piece. Mm -hmm. So then the peanuts are not loose when I open it up. They're still, they're still there, but they're contained within a plastic bag. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And um, when you're receiving ceramics at your gallery, how do, how do most of them come? Um, we've had, we have, uh, I'm trying to think, they've been wrapped in paper, we've had airbags, we've had foam, uh, we've had some artists that take foam and cut out the shape. So the piece fits within the foam and within a shape, which I think is one of the most professional ways I've seen three-dimensional pieces shipped to us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Okay, so just to let you know, if you would like me to email you with a PDF file handout of this program with everything that we covered, you can email me and just say, hey, Stephen, can you send me a PDF of the handout for the juried program? So my email is stephen5w at sbcglobal.net. So you're more than welcome to email me and I will send you the PDF file so you can keep that. Then just to let you know, I do affordable one-on-one -on -one consultations with artists via Zoom. So right now I'm running through the pandemic an $85 special for a one hour session online to answer any specific questions you have and discuss your goals for your art and career. So you can contact me if you're interested in that. And I also have a variety of affordable two hour programs online via Zoom. So um, the programs coming up on Monday is Get Your Shit Together, a get basic game plan for your artist career. And these are all $20 for a two hour program. So you can go to the Artist Network website and register for any of these programs. Um, on Monday, the 24th of August is The Price is Right, Pricing Your Artwork. And on September 14th, this awesome website's creating an attention-grabbing portfolio site. On September 28th is Up Your Game, Approaching Art Galleries for Representation. And on October 12th is Extend Your Reach, Working with art consultants and interior designers. So you can register for any of these programs online at the Artist Network website. So that's www.sfartistnetwork.org. Okay, so thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Kay, for inviting me to make this presentation. So I hope this was helpful and that you can um, submit to some juried shows and build up your exhibit history during the pandemic. Kay, did you have any other comments or questions? I do. Stephen, I just want to highly recommend you to everyone. You are probably the most thorough presenter that I've ever run across. <laughs> and um, just, you know exactly how to help artists and that is such a rare talent and skill set and you present so clearly so i highly recommend stephen to all of you for um for all your questions and uh look forward to having you again stephen um so uh and i do have actually one question for you yes and that is that 
if you were recommending um, our artists for uh, virtual juried shows, is there anything different that they should be doing um, as opposed to juried shows that, that are, have been in the past not virtual? So submitting to a physical show versus, versus a virtual show. A physical show has limitations on size and weight and scale and things like that. So with a virtual show, those limitations are usually lifted. So you can submit larger pieces, heavier pieces, things like that. However, if you're submitting 3D work, you know, in a gallery where you physically go see an exhibition, you can walk around the piece, look at the front, the back, the sides, look at it from different angles. Usually in a virtual show, an online show, you don't have that opportunity. So the 3D work may not show up as good as two-dimensional work when you're doing, um, when you're participating in a virtual exhibition as well. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that's different in virtual online. In terms uh, of photography? Um... So, you know, when you're pho photographing your work, you know, I was at Nancy Toomey's gallery doing some social distance viewing last week at Minnesota Street Projects. And the artists on display, they were all metallic works with paint. And the reflection, when I tried to take photos of the piece, all I saw was my reflection. So I had to like move to the side and it was very challenging. So some work photographs really well and other works don't. So you wanna make sure if you're submitting to a virtual show that the photography uh, is excellent, that it's really showing the, the piece in, uh, as professionally as possible. So certain things like that are glass or metal may have too much reflection or too difficult to uh, photograph or if you're using metallic, like silver, metallic paint in your pieces, they may be hard to photograph. So the mm -hmm. photograph is really important because that's what's gonna be shown on the screen. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah, I, I think that this is going to go forward uh, as being the way we're gonna be showing now, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you um, yes, we, at, at ARC, we're planning everything out to be uh, doing online programs um, through for the next year. For a full mm -hmm. year, so mm -hmm. we're we're still doing physical exhibitions, but we're having an online opening reception. And one thing that we're doing is we're having a series of artist talks. So if we have sixteen artists in the exhibition, we may set set up two artist talks with eight artists in each one. So that gives the artists some extra exposure that they're not getting from the gallery um, having such few people coming to visit. So our gallery is open Saturdays, 12 to three, and then by appointment during the week. So it's very limited hours. And congratulations for all that you're doing to keep that gallery front and center, Stephen. You're doing oh. a great job. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. We hope to join you again one day. Okay, yes, that would be great. <laughs> all right, thank you again. Sure, it was great to be here. Thanks everybody for joining me and I hope that you found it very helpful. And I um, hope to see you all in the, in the next several months, either online or in person. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Yeah. Here, Thank bye -bye. you, Stephen.